Hello and welcome to Eye on Africa, France 24's program focused on the continent. I'm Charlie James and these are the headlines. In South Sudan, the United Nations is investigating more than 100 sexual attacks along roads in the north. Separately, an NGO has filed a case against the government for rapes carried out by the army. Senegal opens its Museum of Black Civilizations, one of the largest of its kind in the world. It's dedicated to decolonizing African knowledge through history and art. And Afrobeat's powerhouse Shay Shay is in Paris promoting her new single. She spoke to us about her music, women's empowerment, and how Nigeria became her launch pad to success. Thanks for joining us on the program tonight. We begin in South Sudan, where over the past two weeks, more than 125 women and girls have sought medical treatment for assaults in the upper Nile region. They say some of the perpetrators wore military uniforms. Now, sadly, this case is hardly unique. The UN says thousands have been raped since the war began in the country. Now, for the first time, one NGO is taking legal action against the government. Laurent Bestcher brings us the story. A landmark case against sexual violence. Legal Action Worldwide filed a complaint against the government of South Sudan on behalf of 30 women who say they were raped by members of the military during the civil war. The NGO claims this is only the tip of the iceberg and that thousands more never came forward for fear of reprisals. Despite the serious um, fears that many of these women and girls have, we found a core group of women who are willing to say enough is enough. The army that, we, that, that committed these violations are mainly commanded by the government. They belong to the government forces. This comes less than a week after Doctors Without Borders reported that 125 women and girls had been sexually assaulted by unknown gunmen in Bentiu, a government-controlled area. South Sudanese authorities disputed the veracity of the report. The United Nations, meanwhile, condemned what it called a wave of brutal sexual attacks and launched an investigation into the matter. The reality of uh, using uh, rape as a weapon of war is, is there, and there is no need to, to contest it. The figures are very high, and this is not acceptable, of course, and we need to do something about it. Despite a fragile peace agreement signed in September, Tensions remain high in South Sudan as the country struggles to emerge from a five-year civil war. Last year, Amnesty International accused both sides of committing premeditated sexual violence on a massive scale and warned this had left thousands of women battling stigma and mental distress in the world's youngest country. A prominent government critic in Rwanda has been acquitted of insurrection charges. Cheers broke out in court as Diane Wigera was found not guilty of forgery and inciting insurrection. The three-judge panel called the charges, quote, baseless. Wigera had been imprisoned for over a year, and her family had assets forcibly auctioned. She had also been banned from running against President Paul Kagame in elections. Following the verdict, she vowed to supporters that she will continue to fight. After 52 years in the making, Senegal has opened its Museum of Black Civilizations. Now one of the largest such museums in the world, it contains over 18,000 pieces of art. It was the dream of the country's first president and showcases black heritage from the dawn of time to the modern era. Our correspondent Sarah Sacco was at the opening in Dakar and takes us there. A 12 meter tall sculpture representing a baobab tree by Haitian artist immediately grabs visitors' attention as they enter the museum. It's one of the key exhibits. A history of religions of the world, scientific discoveries and contemporary works make up the exhibition spread over 14,000 square meters, tracing African creations from prehistoric times to the modern era. Beyond art, the museum seeks to showcase Africa's contribution to the world. We want to shed light on other areas, such as certain techniques and science in general. We want to dispel the prejudice that exists regarding Africa, which is that Africans never invented their own techniques. This museum will be able to show precisely that this is not the case. The first visitors seem won over. All the contemporary art I've seen is extraordinary. 
This is a beautiful initiative for Africa and its diaspora. The museum doesn't have a permanent collection yet, but institutions from around the world, such as the Quai Branly Museum in Paris, have agreed to collaborate and loan certain artworks. This sabre is a treasure of war, usually on show at the Invalide Museum in Paris. The new museum could eventually receive African treasures returned by France. Felwyn Saar, a Senegalese researcher, co-authored a recent report on returning looted African art. Not only is this a great opportunity for Senegalese art, but if we look at things from a broader perspective and adopt a pan-African vision, we could consider that since this is a museum of black civilizations, we could showcase art from Mali, Burkina Faso or Niger until these countries get the necessary infrastructure or even as a way to help spread their work. In the future, 18,000 artworks will be exhibited in this museum, which meets all international standards and best practices. Nigerian British singer Shehi Shea is one of the biggest Afrobeat stars in the world. Her unique style has launched her from Lagos to touring with Beyonce to millions of video views and a huge social media following. She's known for incorporating styles from around the world while also promoting her Nigerian musical roots. Che Che is in Paris to promote her new single, Gimme Love. Here's a sample of that. And earlier on the program, she stopped by to discuss her sound and how Afrobeats has caught fire around the world. Afrobeats is having its moment in the sun, definitely. Right across the world, Afrobeats is taking over everywhere. But also, I'm from originally from the UK, born and raised in London to Nigerian parents. And so my music influences are very, very wide, from reggae to ska to electric to house and um, obviously Afrobeat, because I'm African, I'm Nigerian. And I think that a lot of my past singles like Murder and Right Now have a similar sound to this. Um, sometimes I, I switch it up a bit, which is uh, what I did with Yolo Yolo, which is uh, a song of a video that you played earlier. So I think, yeah, definitely the resounding sound of Shea Shea is because of all these, you know, um, aspects. And you mentioned growing up in the UK. You've said before that moving from London to Lagos uh, really transformed your career, gave you really opportunities is. that you wouldn't have had. What is it about the music scene in Lagos that allowed you to really flourish? I think um, the individuality of the actual music industry in, in Nigeria, there's none like it. Um, before I moved to Nigeria, I was with a girl band called From Above. We had a reality show on MTV and we were managed by Matthew Knowles, who is Beyonce's dad, for three and a half years. Five girls, British girls. Um, we got signed to Sony Records. Um, in America, but it just didn't quite take off the way we planned. Um, when I moved to Nigeria, um, I really wasn't, I don't know what I was expecting. I think I just wanted to do something different. So when I got there um, and I released a few songs and I did a few shows supporting a few big acts, all of a sudden my fan base started to grow uh, for me as a solo artist and I started touring and I started doing different uh, music uh, platforms. And um, honestly, I think Nigeria just has a, a, a life and a heartbeat of its own. And, you know, I don't know. It's just something about our music and about the people, 200 million people. I mean, of course, there's someone's going to listen, all right? And, um, and I've now become an export <laughs> from Nigeria as opposed to an import. So that's really good. But what went into you making that decision? Because leaving behind a career that I'm sure you built so hard yes. to make in Britain. I spent years trying to look for a record deal in the UK um, and it just it just didn't happen. And actually, when I moved back to Nigeria two years later, I released a lot, song called Murder and, and a record company called Island Records back in the UK had seen the success of it online. And then I got a record deal. So I had to go back to Nigeria become, you know, a solo artist, mm -hmm. popular, you know, that everybody knew. And then Island Records back in the UK said, hey, you know, we want to sign you. And so it's just as ironic, but, you know, it's a great it's a great thing that um, a lot of people see now see me more than they did when I was living in London or with the girl group from above. Mm -hmm. I want to talk also about your work as an advocate for women's justice. Uh, you were in a popular UN video uh, that remade a Spice Girls song. We yes. can play a little bit of right. that. The song Wannabe. 
but with a women's empowerment message. Uh, why, why is that cause important to you? Um, I believe in women empowerment. I'm very passionate about the cause. Um, I want um, uh, equal pay for women right across the world, especially in Africa. I want quality education for women and young girls. I want to see an end to child marriage. I want to see an end to, to uh, uh, tra trafficking. And I think that the more women like myself that have a platform and have a voice that get behind these causes, you know, the bigger impact, the more chance we stand of making that change. And so when I teamed up with the UN to do this project, um, it was probably one of the biggest, most fulfilling things that I've ever done in my life. And of course, it went around the whole world. Yeah, everywhere, got so much attention. Yeah, it got so much attention. And um, the global goals is, is something that I stand behind 100%. And I'm really, really happy um, that I was part of, of the project. Shay Shay's new single is Gimme Love, and she's performing here in Paris on Saturday at the VRB Paris nightclub. That's all for this edition of Ion Africa, but don't go away. There's more news coming up next. You know, you know, you don't know. Here in the Alps, the glaciers are melting and the permafrost, the frozen ground, is warming up too. And that means that in some places, these mountains are literally falling apart. Join us here on France 24 throughout the COP Climate Conference. We'll be bringing you a series of reports showing the impact that global warming is already having on the ground. And we'll be showing you some of the solutions that are being put in place too. Find our exclusive series of reports on France 24 and France24.com.